Good afternoon or morning, wherever you happen to be, everybody. Uh, welcome to day two. Uh, very nice to see you. Stephanie, I didn't know if you had anything you wanted to say to the folks um, as we got started today before we introduced the session, but I'll, I'll give you some, a chance to do that if you'd like. I just want to say uh, good afternoon or good morning to everyone, uh, similar to Grant. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but we do have our breakout session set up for this evening, and um, I'll try to put the different ones in the chat. And so then you can start thinking about which one you might want to go to later this evening. But we're really excited. We hope you had a great day yesterday. Uh, seemed like there were some great conversations and some fabulous connections. And I hope you experienced that as well today. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Grant. Thank you. Uh, well, joining us uh, today is uh, a couple of good friends of ours and good colleagues, uh, Justin Reynolds, who is our Director of Research Initiatives at the Aku Hawaii Central Office and Bill Matera, who is our Campus Housing Index Advisory Panel Chair and also uh, a Senior Housing Officer at Louisiana State University. Uh, so one of the important things that Akuhawai has tried to do in recent years has become more of a data-driven association. Uh, you'll find that you know in the past, we didn't have a lot of data or good information that our members could access that would talk specifically about housing and residence life and how housing programs manage and conduct business and all the associated things. And so the Campus Housing Index is a way that we do that. Um, it's a lot of great information, uh, but as mid-level professionals, even if you're not actively the person contributing and entering that data, you may find really good ways to do that. So Bill and Justin are going to talk about ways uh, that you can do that. It's some really interesting features that will hopefully help you in your job. So I will turn it over to Justin and Bill. Good morning, everyone. Um, so Justin and I kind of as we planned our short little window with you this morning, want to spend a couple minutes walking you through what the CHI can offer, what it can do. He muted. I know, I saw myself get muted then. It, like the screen popped up and then it was, but we're good now, right? Yes, you can hear me. All right, great. So one of the share comments with you is some of our, our goals and challenges this year. As Grant said, one of the things we're really focused on is increasing usage of the CHI, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, as we kind of work through our processes here. So <clears throat> thinking about the CHI, it's really designed to be a data house for all housing professionals. One of the most common misconceptions in, is, is what's housed in there. So I think if you get a chance to play in the CHI, you'll see it collects a lot more data than what we're sort of giving it credit for. The most common usage right now is compensation, right? Lots of folks come in and want to look at the compensation tool to figure out how they benchmark. But the CHI collects data across the operation, whether it be dining pieces, conferences, facilities, number of beds, types of beds. There's a significant data warehouse there of things that can really be useful for all functional areas. And so one of our yeah. major, major goals is continuing to help people figure out what's in there for them. But one of the things we're excited about for this year is when the CHI opens is a brand new reworked residential life section. And so if you've been in the CHI before, you know the old residential life section really was kind of wonky. And so last year the group, uh, pre-pandemic was working through a new question set to collect some more information about programming model, programming types, and that'll be the first go round in this collection of data. What the hope is, is that this allows you really easy benchmarking. I know for many of us, as we've talked about it in our group, when you benchmark, the fastest way to do that is sort of email people you know to the schools, send a list out really quick and kind of gather information. The hope is the CHI can replace that a little bit, right? That you can go in and pull regional connections, uh, whether it be the, the CIHO, Glucuho region that you live in or sort of other peer institutions. And, and when you get into those higher levels of access and if you choose to, to pay an option, building some customized reports as well that can kind of say, these are our benchmark institutions and partnering with the central office to really build that custom data set you need to make the best case on your campus but also maybe looking at what other folks do to increase practice evaluation and, and help you in your decision-making and pulling data quickly and easily. I think as I've become the CHI advisory panel chair and played with it, I think you'd be very surprised how quickly you can get data out of this versus that sort of send the email and wait a week and a half to get information. You can pull a lot pretty quickly at your fingertips once you're in the database. And when I'm done talking, Justin's gonna demo for you a little bit today of what it looks like on the back end and show you exactly how you can use it. So I mentioned some of our goals for this year as an advisory panel, and we wanted to share those with you today because it's an opportunity where you can really help them. The first one is really increasing usage and data input. So many of your CHOs receive a request every uh, in April this year to put data into the system, to kind of enter all of your information in that system. 
we really struggled a little bit to get small college and HBCU usage, which makes the tool not as effective. And so the advisory panel is going to do some really focused information for folks to kind of make sure we're putting the information and in, getting them in there. The other thing is, and you all may be invited to participate at some point, is doing some focus groups across campuses to kind of figure out what the barriers are to data entry, right? The, the number one thing that anyone can do to make this more robust is to plug information into it, right? The better we can get it to kind of move that through there. And we're trying to figure out what are the barriers that are preventing folks for, from doing that. And so this is one of our major goals. The second thing is we know that, that even as we do this work, uh, we are not always the best users of the system. There are some folks across the association who are using this system way better than we can even imagine. And we wanna start highlighting those stories and kind of pulling those information in to start giving others ideas on how to best use the this, this system and kind of make sure they're getting their resources. And then the last is really help people understand what, what, what all it can do, what all are the resources that it can provide you, what are the things that it can give you on your campuses, seeing how that data comes out of the system and then how it can benefit you on your home campuses. For you all at the mid-level, I think one of the things that, one of the reasons I was interested in, in this particular leadership position at Google I is we've used it on our campus for a ton of project management, whether it be as we were building new buildings, what are our peers doing? What does their inventory look like? We've used it a, a bunch for compensation and things like that as well. And the residential life section to our peer institutions has been helpful as well. And so for a lot of us at the mid-level, we're doing tons of project management and assessment in the ways that it's really difficult to collect data quickly or to get folks to respond. This tool for our level can be really helpful at thinking those things through, but also making sure that data entry and collection gets in there. So making sure that as it comes time to the window to put information in, we want the CHI to be as accurate as possible. And so getting your foot in the door to get that data entry, helping your CHO plug that information in so you can start to see what it looks like at the end. And then everyone at your institution, if you complete that survey and, and, and that data or buy the license has access to the back end of the CHI. How can we help entry level staff or some of your sort of lower mid level staff really begin to understand what's at their fingertips, right? So that really hungry entry level pro that's got this great idea that they wanna plug into the world can you help us plug them into the CHI so they can get that information and make sort of informed proposals as they go along? So that's kind of an overview. I wanna show you a couple outputs really quick before I hand it over to Justin. Justin and I kind of tried to brainstorm some questions that might be helpful for you all to kind of see what the outputs are as we go through this process. And so this first slide here is number of residents per full-time live-in staff member, a pretty common question that gets asked across the field. So if you look across the bottom, each of the bar, each group represents 25% of the MLI registrants on this call today, right? So you should find your campus in one of the four bubbles and somewhere as you result in the 25% range. So essentially what we've done is broken the data down. If you're under 1200 beds, this is the range that it would look like on the campuses that represent your population with the blue bar being the low. So 233 being a relatively good average for that, that left side of the graph and 371 being the high. And so it allows you to kind of benchmark where you fall, are we in the middle, are we at the top, are we at the bottom, to your individual campus. And what's nice about this and the data, the way it comes out, is rather than focusing on individual campuses, you would know how many campuses you're talking about. And you can present that data up to CHOs, vice presidents, as a range of folks our size, right? So it eliminates that, what's one specific school doing? It gives you that broader picture of everybody that falls in here. The bed ranges are a really great way to pull data on the back end of the CHI, which Justin will show you in a few minutes. Same thing at the other end, right? So large campuses of 6,000 beds, you're talking about 422 to 636. The other thing you'd be able to do in the CHI if you were in a deep dive project is figure out how many live-in professionals do they have and cross that data together to kind of paint your picture. And so again, rather than just having to count on those six or seven colleges you go to every time, the CHI really gives you the ability to look across the association at what does it look like at all campuses our size. So we live a lot in the res life section and I, Justin and I really wanted to think about life outside of just the res life bubble for those of you that may be from there. And so the second question we talked about is what are the factors that determine our conference rates on our campus, right? So as we're looking about pricing and budgeting, how do we make those decisions? So one of the questions in the CHI is related exactly to that. How do we make these decisions related to make conference rates? Now, obviously, as you look at the graphs here, the way Justin has uh, separated the data for us is city and suburban campuses versus town and rural campuses, right? Big differences there. What are hotel rates in local markets? What do those things look like? Uh, what are our different amenities, cost of travel? All those things factor in. And what the CHI lets you do is begin to figure out what are the things we should consider? 
This is really helpful for new mid-level folks, right? If you're looking at making brand new decisions for the first time and you wanna make a proposal on changing your conference rates, it's a great air point for you to look at, well, what are the things I could factor in, right? What are the things that I need to work through and figuring out what those things look like? Um, and so really thinking about like what amenities you offer, right? So cost of amenities is the third from the right there. If you're not offering a lot, that may not be something you need to take into effect. But if you wanna start offering it, this can give you some benchmarking on campuses our size and what it look like or geographically where we're at. And so again, when you get in there and, and Justin, I'll show you in a second, when you get in there and you click around a little bit, you can really start to customize your outputs to the questions you wanna ask, right? You could add in a layer of number of beds and all those things along the way, but it, the data comes out just as easily with the percentages and the graphs for you to be able to kind of figure out what exactly it is that you're looking at. So those are just two examples of sort of uh, some data we pulled to quickly show you what it looks like. And I'm gonna hand it over to Justin to kind of give you a demo of the system. All right, uh, thanks. Bill, let me share my screen real quick. Um, are we all seeing the uh, landing page of the, the CHI? Just a few head nods will, will work. Perfect. Um, so my typical demo is between 30 and 45 minutes long. So if I go at this breakneck speed, I apologize. Um, to that end, if at the end of this um, particular session, if you're like, whoa, that was way too much, that was way too quick, I'm available for demos for you and or your staff um, at a separate time. All you have to do is email me chi at akuo-i.org and say, hey, I'd like to set up something like this, and I'm happy to do that with any of you. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, to log in, you'd go to akuo-i.org slash chi, um, or if you're on the landing page of our website, it's this purple button up here. Um, and, and then it's pretty self-explanatory. Just click this button right here and you'll use your Akuo-i credentials um, to uh, be able to log in. Um, once you get to this landing page here, if you are the senior housing officer, you'll see three sections. If you are not the senior housing officer, you will see these two sections right here, profile and operations. Um, and so I'm just gonna walk you through um, how to benchmark live as it were. Um, and I'll use the uh, examples that we just showed you, um, that, that uh, Bill just showed you um, in the uh, PowerPoint. So in order to benchmark against a particular campus um, or set of campuses, excuse me, you click compare to peers on any of these sections. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you to um, question comparisons um, in the particular section that you have questions about. Um, we gave you two uh, specific examples out of 300 and something different data points in the CHI. So um, it's pretty robust. Um, what I believe Bill showed you first was the uh, lit in the live-in staff section. So those ratios, um, number of full-time live-in professionals uh, or number of residents per full-time live-in professional. So in each of these um, question comparison uh, tabs, you're gonna have a filter box up here. And um, depending on what your level of access is, um, if you have basic, you're gonna have these first three. Um, so public, private, um, CIHO, Neokuho, any of the regions that you'd like to filter by, as well as the state and province. If you have premium, it's gonna add all these uh, different um, filtering capabilities for you. Um, and so to me, it's, it seems pretty intuitive. Um, you hit edit, um, you'd go in and you'd make your selections. So, you know, I really wanna know about campuses with a bed capacity between 3000 beds and 6,500 beds. I don't know if that's an appropriate benchmark for you. That's something that every uh, campus and every professional kind of has to decide. Um, but once you do that, it's going to tell you that there's an average of six of, of 69 responses or whatever the, the response rate is for that particular page. So you know, in general, how many campuses are answering that kind of data. Um, and I'm going to scroll down to the specific Yes, here we go. So resident to live in professional staff ratio. And there's those three numbers that um, 
uh, Bill showed you earlier, the 373 being on the low range, the 450, um, and then the 560 residents for that particular bed count range. Are we all following me so far? Okay. Um, so let's say, um, Justin, this is all great, but I really don't want to hand copy and paste this for um, my VP or my director of housing or whoever might be requesting this data. Um, if you need this data in a more kind of digestible format, at the very top of the page, there's a save as, and you can export it to Excel. And it's going to export all that data into an Excel file for you so that you can then plug it into PowerPoint or um, any kind of chart or graph or, or whatever you kind of need to show. Um, the last thing that I want to share with you is um, personalized reports. So if you hit personalized reports, um, any kind of report that we create in-house um, and sell in the Akuai bookstore um, of CHI data is automatically going to be uploaded to this section. Um, so you should have access to those static PDF reports that we produce. Um, the other half of this at the bottom of this particular page, um, you have this filtering box again, just like you would when you were comparing data, but now you have PowerPoint um, decks for each of the sections. Um, and so what that does is when you click um, this uh, PowerPoint, depending on what you've selected in your, uh, in your filters, what it's gonna do is it's gonna download an entire deck full of graphs that are automatically created for you based on the questions in that section. Um, so I'll go ahead and do business operations report um, and kind of show you what that looks like. Can everybody see this PowerPoint? Yeah, okay. So you'll see that it um, automatically creates charts, graphs based on um, that particular, uh, that 3000 to, I think I said 6,500 bed capacity or whatever your other parameters are. So now you have the ability to go to a specific data point and not have to actually create that graph yourself, and it's even more easier to plug it into something that um, you might need for a presentation or, or whether you're arguing for, you know, more staff counts, less staff, um, lower staff counts, or whatever that case might be. Again, there's 300 different data points in the CHI, so um, the idea is that it is uh, helpful to a wide variety of people for a wide variety of uses. Um, that is my spiel. Does anybody have any questions for me? Okay. Well, you know how to reach me um, if you do think of something. Um, I am trying to figure out how to stop sharing my screen. There it is. Sorry, I have three monitors. Um, yeah, you know how to reach me. Hi, this is Amber Simpkins. I'm the Assistant Director of Residence Life at Mount St. Mary's University. I have a question for the Housing Index. Are you, is there a way to also um, indicate if our campus has multiple properties. So like if we have different locations, so that would put our ratio different. So like normally we're under a thousand beds, right? But we have two campuses, right? A full-time staff would look different what we have, you know, and what would be reasonable to have a full-time on one campus and then another could look different. Is that something that you all have? Cause I know we're not the only campus obviously that has multiple locations, so. Yeah, that's sure. my question. Um, what I can say is um, that it's possible to do that and to parse that out. Um, what the, the way that I, I understand it now is that if you report as a different campus into IPEDS, into the National Center for Education Statistics, that is what would flow down. So for a multi-campus system or a multi-campus uh, college, um, if it was reflected in that data, it'll be reflected in ours. But if it's not, 
currently we're able to, to make that happen for you. Justin, this is Stephanie, I have a question for you and I'm trying to remember if it's part of the campus housing index or a separate function, but every year KUHAI puts out like the live on report, the compensation reports. And I, I wanna say, I think it comes from the data from the CHI and I've certainly found those extremely helpful um, staying in tune with what institutions are doing, what some of the trends are, and then maybe thinking about what the future might look like. Sure, so that is 100% CHI data. And um, it is um, what I was talking about in that personalized reports tab, all of those static files, those PDFs at the top, anything we um, uh, put in our, in our bookstore, the ones that you're referencing specifically around CHI are all included as a part of the, the platform. Um, the idea being that if you, you know, don't, uh, don't have the resources to um, purchase the full platform right now that you can still get some static level data in the bookstore. But if you do have that access, then you get everything that we have um, produced relative to that CHI data. And that includes the residence life, the operations and the compensation reports. It's a lot, it was very quick. Um, a lot of people won't know what questions to ask until you can get in there. Um, just by show of hands, um, how many of you before this thought that the CHI was only for senior housing officers? Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, whatever subscription level access, whether that's basic or premium that your campus has or that your SHO has purchased, that is available to um, anybody that is on your campus effectively that's tied to your organization. So you've, if you have an AKUI account that is tied to ABC University and ABC University's SHO has purchased premium, you have the ability along with all of your colleagues, resident directors, area directors, all of that to be able to get in here and filter, um, filter the data. Justin, this is Stephanie, sorry, one last question. And it actually feeds off what Amber had mentioned earlier. Um, I'm also thinking about, we also have some international sites and wondering if there are options or if there's been consideration around being able to do some benchmarking. Um, like we have a campus in Florence. I know some folks have a campus campuses in, in Saudi Arabia and, and just trying to think about what we might be able to do with, with that type of data. Sure, um, I think that is kind of an ongoing discussion. Um, admittedly, that's net like that's never been brought up to me before outside of um, those uh, campuses that are just um, outside of the U.S. proper. Um, but I'm sure it could, you know we can work something out in terms of splicing up a particular account um, for for situations like that. Because you know, again, to um, to Amber's point. It's not uncommon, of course, to have satellite campuses. Well, as, a, as while you think of questions, or there are other questions. When uh, Justin uh, and our chair, like Michael Gripple is also out here, but we are working on refilling the advisory panel. We have a number of spots open as the advisory panel is moving from a sort of static meet to review the questions to do some work this spring and fall on really kind of engaging folks in the data and figuring out folks are using. If you're super assessment passionate and you want to help us figure out how to get folks to plug in or how to get folks to use the data more or to even collect some of those user stories and help us make testimonials and video and you're interested in joining the panel, we're looking for about five more folks to join us. So if there's something you're interested in, um, it's, you know, we'll be joined by some folks who helped found the panel and have like that big picture vision of what we were trying to do. We are openly looking for folks who might want to join us. And so if that is something you're interested in, please let us know um, and we'll be happy to kind of plug you in there as well. We're, like I said, our, our main goal 
is really figuring out how to get folks to use this, how to take that time to plug in the data, and then on the back end, really kind of pull out the reports they need to make really good decisions on their campuses. This is Amber again. I have another question. So um, have you all integrated potentially asking any questions around um, like campus climate and like if cultural competencies are met or like is it a wheelchair friendly campus? Is it a like different things like that because um, that could impact, you know, as professionals the way we search. Um, or things like that. But I understand also with the index, it's supposed to be more numeric information, but I wasn't sure if that's something you all have considered, especially given um, the current comments with, you know, Asian hate and Black Lives Matter and, you know, ADA accommodations, you know, people looking for what's friendly for that. Sure, so um, you're kind of right on the mark in your characterization that the CHI is um, more quantitative than it is qualitative. Um, and that simply comes from a, a um, confidentiality kind of standpoint. Um, it's really difficult to, um, with a, a research division of one, um, parse through three to 400 different qualitative responses around questions each year. Um, but that's not to say that there, there aren't elements around campus climate that are quantitative um, that we would be open to, or the panel would be open, open to incorporating. Um, uh, gradually changing the questions that are in the CHI is a, an activity that the panel is, you know, that's a central charge of the index advisory panel is to continuously assess what's included and what's not. Um, and so, I, I, I guess my answer to your question is um, yes and sort of. Yeah, and the other thing that's really important I think to cover as well is that it's not, the, the panel doesn't, the uh, index doesn't really let you go to a specific campus and look at sort of their answers to that question. It's really designed to look at like class-based, like my organization wants to make some decisions, here's the thing. The, the, Index does include a number of questions related to uh, accessibility and sort of what are other campuses doing in accessibility. So it's got a, a section related to um, what you provide, what's required for a student to get an accommodation. Uh, all of the questions include gender inclusive housing. So if you're looking to bring that to your campus or figure out where you're at in that process, you could run a panel of schools in this region and what does it look like for gender inclusive housing in that space. Um, it also asks about type of diversity programming offered and what those things look like. And so. It doesn't necessarily work reverse engineer to say, I'm looking at this campus, what do they offer? It's really designed for you to be able to say, I want to make the campus I'm on get closer to this decision. Tell me everyone who allows ESAs and what they require or, or show me what everybody requires for ADA accommodation. So the, the panel can or the index can really help you diversify the campus you're on. It, it would be a pretty tough reverse engineer to get to the exact right answers to figure out the campus you're looking to go to, what they do or don't do. So, um, Catherine just uh, put a question in here um, about uh, access to be able to enter data. Um, so each data cycle, um, we send your SHO an access key that they can share with select people on their campus that gives you permission to enter data on behalf of them. Um, so uh, Catherine and company, for those of the folks in here who are not SHOs on, on your campus, you would need to reach out to them for that particular um, access code. Um, this year's data collection is April 30th through July 30th. So in the next few weeks, we'll be sending out that email to your um, senior housing officer with that access code. Great. Any other questions for Justin or Bill? Wonderful. Well, I, as Justin said, he's open to helping out with any demos. I know the whole advisory panel is uh, 
eager to, to support the profession and, and using this great tool. And so thank you to them and also uh, to Mike Griffel who showed up as well. Nice to see you, Mike. Um, and let us know if we can ever help you navigate it. It's a great resource and a great tool for you to use. Um, we just pasted the link to the next session. And so uh, in just five minutes, we'll join uh, Crystal and Leonard for their session in the next room. Um, and so thank you again for being here. Thanks to Bill, Justin, and Mike, and uh, we'll see you all shortly. Thanks, everybody.